It's your old mate, the Kiwi Banjo. We are uh, heading over to Sanson. Sanson we're heading off to, which is only 10 minutes away. We're meeting a few of my old colleagues from the prison. Some of the boys I haven't seen uh, in a while. And we're going to go for a bit of an explore. Uh, we're going to head over towards Whanganui and Upu Kongaroa, or I can't remember how to pronounce it. <coughs> um, we're going to go there, and then we're taking a few uh, windy back roads. Um, yeah, just doing a bit of an explore, spending a bit of time together. It should be a slightly slower ride than uh, Worsley's uh, Twilight Ride. Um, so yeah, beautiful day. Um, it was raining yesterday quite heavily, and it didn't. It didn't instill much confidence for a day like we've got right now, so, yeah. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, dry throat. Um, on the concussion front, I'm still suffering from concussion. Um, I'm back at work five hours a day now, uh, which, is, uh, which is good. It's not as much of a struggle as what it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, part of the reason um, I found it quite hard is I hit the back of my head, the back of your brain is where you uh, you do all the computing for sight. And my job <coughs> um, is predominantly writing reports on a computer. So obviously white light, um, which is what we see now. Um, white light is made up of many colours of light which all travel at different frequencies um, and the part of the brain which I hit um, it scrambled up how my brain deals with um, the spectrum of colour in white light so in order to uh, rectify that issue I've got these temporary lenses which I can magnetically clip onto my uh, my glasses and what they do is um, they filter they filter green light they're a green lens um, it's not noticeably green to look at the, the, the clip on but um, apparently after having a Erlen's eye test um, my brain has got issues with the colour green within white light so I've got a uber expensive filter that goes on my glasses for when I'm using the computer or reading. Um, yeah, so my fatigue <coughs> is uh, lessened, which means I don't get headaches as fast. So that's really good. Um, so yeah, the headaches are diminishing. I still have a headache all day long. <coughs> it's just not as bad as what it was weeks ago. I've essentially been living with a headache <coughs> since uh, since I hit my head. The only time I don't experience a headache is when I'm asleep. Um, well, that's not true. Sometimes I get woken up because of headaches. <coughs> um, so yeah, I've had a three month long headache and I can't take paracetamol or uh, there's, there's no medication that helps really. Unless I take multiple pills, which is not good for you, and uh, yeah, definitely not a fan of that. So that's where we're at with the concussion. We're nearly recovered. I'd like to continue, it sort of uh, stalled for a while there. I'd also like to continue um, doing the uh, doing the prison vlogs. If you guys have got any questions, don't forget to ask them. If you want to know anything about prisons, in New Zealand, let me know, okay? And we'll, uh, we'll cover off some more stuff. We have the, I believe it's the fourth highest incarceration rate per head of population in the developed world. I believe number one is the United States. We're a country of just over four million people. Uh, and when I left the prison system, there were 10,000 people locked up in a jail, up in uh, jails, prisons throughout the country. 
um, having just built a brand new, I think it was a $3 billion prison um, up in Auckland, in a place called Wurri. Um, yeah, so... The aim of the government at the moment is to reduce the number of people in prisons. And the way they're doing that is by lightening sentencing and sentencing those people to uh, community-based sentences. Uh, obviously prison is uh, supposed to be for the worst of the worst. So there's a range of sentences prior to prison or incarceration um, that are available to the court as an option depending on the crime. Um, it starts with uh, a conviction of discharge, so you get convicted and then you get really no punishment. And that's mainly for minor first-time offences. <coughs> um, then you have uh, to come up with called upon. So that's when you've been naughty. Um, you're kind of given a little bit of a second chance, um, whereby if you are naughty again and you come up in front of the court, uh, but it's kind of like um, double or nothing, okay? You kind of get let off, but if you get in trouble again, you get slapped even harder the second time round. Then you've got reparation. <clears throat> so when you've, uh, if I was to, I don't know, punch someone, they fell over, hit their head, and um, had time off work, costing them money, I'd pay reparation. Then there's fines. So where your, your crime is co uh, converted to a monetary punishment. Um, fines. Uh, then we have um, supervision, which is a rehabilitative sentence, which means that um, the person has to um, report in to a probation office on a regular basis and undergo programs or uh, undertake special conditions as um, directed by the court. Uh, then you've got intensive supervision where they have to report more regularly. Um, so supervision, once you've done X amount of reportings, you can um, back off on the reportings. Intensive supervision is just more intensive version of supervision, hence the name. Then we have um, community detention, which is where um, you are <coughs> given a curfew, and during that curfew, um, you are not allowed to leave your home. Then you have home detention, which is you are imprisoned at your home 24-7. Um, and the only time you're allowed to leave is if there's an emergency or you have uh, an approved absence to leave the address. Other than that, you are not allowed to leave um, a defined boundary or perimeter. Then you've got imprisonment. Those are the... Uh, those are your options. So yeah, we've got a range of stuff here and the, the, uh, the government has lightened up sentencing uh, to reduce the number of people in prisons. And community-based sentences can last for um, oh, months or if you are, say, a murderer and you're released on parole you can have uh, parole conditions um, where your sentence is known as released on conditions and that lasts for the whole the rest of your natural life. So if you do something wrong, you can be recalled to prison. And that doesn't, does, doesn't just apply to, <coughs> to lifers. You can have people on, who have been released from prison on lesser charges. Um, and uh, yeah, they get parole for good behaviour and whatnot. Um, parole for good behaviour. Um, <clears throat> but can be recalled at any time. If they um, breach their conditions of release or <coughs> pose an undue risk to the public.
so here we are, we're out and about. Uh, we had to wait on someone who came all the way from Waikanae for a ride. That's a good hour away. So we've got uh, old Jimmy up there on the Can-Am Spider. Got the old ST. Got an SV650. Uh, Honda CMX 650, I think it is. Um, a GSXS 750 and a GSXR 750R. So a good little group. Uh, we're going heading over towards Wanganui. It's the best part of an hour away. Um, and then we're uh, taking a few back roads. So it should be bloody fantastic. Right from here, we are going to uh, Hunterville across some nice curly windy weavy cornery stuff thing. <coughs> so what we have here Right, so what we have here is a group of uh, guys we've all ridden before um, and someone who um, hasn't ridden with us before is the, um, is the first bike behind the spider up there um, this person um, is has come off Can-Am Spiders and is on a bike, so well done you. Um, <clears throat> I assume, um, I'm not sure what kind of license this person is on, but they are very uh, inexperienced and not, not a very confident rider. Um, <clears throat> We've put this person up at the front as so they're not left behind. They're from out of the area, they don't know these roads. Um, but, um, yeah. This person's braking, rear braking, pretty much all the way around the corner. I don't know if we get to see an example. So the brake is on there, brake is off before the corner. So they're braking through the corner. This road is 100 kilometres an hour speed limit and we're doing 40 kilometres an hour. Now it's nice for this person to get out and ride, gain <coughs> more experience and gain in confidence. This is my day off, I want to ride, I'm not doing 40k an hour in a 100k zone. <coughs> Not 
sure who's taught this person to ride but if you happen to be watching this video you should not break um, through a corner you definitely shouldn't front brake and you should only use limited rear brake and only if you really have to what it does is when you brake through a corner the bike does not want to lean the bike wants to stand up obviously when you're going through a corner you don't want your bike to stand up you want it to lean into the corner so by braking if you think you're going too fast into a corner the worst thing you can do is hit the brake okay that will stand the bike up and you'll find yourself in a ditch before you even know it there's an old saying if in doubt power out if you find yourself going too far into a corner and you don't think you're going to make it what you need to do instead of focusing on where you might crash focus on where it is you want to go lean the bike even more in okay and put power on if you do not you will end up going to the place that you're looking okay so target fixation is when you're going around a corner and you don't think you're going to make it what is the first instinct is for you to look at the place where you think you're going to end up okay you end up looking at the place you're going to crash okay now whether it be um, riding a bike or throwing a ball where you look is where you go okay <clears throat> so if you're going into a corner you think oh no I'm not going to make it you end up looking at the place you think you're going to crash trying not to go there but you'll end up going there because you're looking at it what you need to do is move your eyes from where you think you're going to crash to where it is you want to go and put power on okay that's the way to fix it okay instead of going oh no i'm not going to make it and uh, oh no i'm going to crash there you need to look to where you want to go and use power and the introduction of power i'll show you will turn the bike in the direction you want it to go okay it's a really unnatural scary feeling okay thinking you're going too fast into a corner and then wanting to apply more power to get out of the the situation you're in it's counterintuitive and it feels wrong and after 20 something years of riding it still feels wrong and going into a corner too hot sometimes you know it still happens to me I get a little bit of target fixation or I don't judge a corner quite right and um, yeah what you've got to do is you've just got to turn your head and look at where it is you want to go and apply the power okay don't approach a corner think you're going too fast apply the brakes because you will end up crashing This is the person here. Um, so you should be able to do this. I mean, we're doing currently again 40 kilometers an hour. Beautiful countryside here, though. I gotta say, these roads are feeling new also got to say so you should be braking preparing for the corner off the brakes lean the bike in and power out 